Davidson. His uh, subject is social media security rules of thumb. Michael realized he was a nerd in high school and worked as a software developer for the next 25 years. He has also worked in cybersecurity. And today he's a service desk manager trying to keep his users safe. Uh, he's bringing a couple of those gleanings for us this evening. Let's all welcome Michael Davidson. Davidson, social media security rules of thumb. Thank you very much. This is uh, some great advice. I don't really know how I can add to it too much, but I did want to ask a question or two. How many of you use some form of social media? Can you raise your hand? So if you're typical Americans, you are a group of 83% of the population in America who use social media. That's a lot of people when you come down to it. When you consider that only 91% of them actually have access to the internet. So that means that most people who have access to the internet also use some form of social media. Now we had a previous meeting on social media and we were talking about the different kinds that are out there. And I'm not going to belabor the points of this, but I'm going to try to go through not 10, but nine, since we're a little short on time, thumbnails that we can use for social media rules. So let's begin. So it said 10 rules, I'm, I'm discounting here. We're gonna actually make it nine. The first one is that shared information in social media is forever. If you've ever read an agreement that those long agreements that they have you sign and agree to when you go through there, most of them state that anything that you post on their service becomes their property. They can do with it whatever they want to. They can go ahead and advert, use it for advertising. They could use it to share in other channels. It becomes their property. Any photos, any graphical creations that you create, even files that you upload can become part of their network and you lose control of how long it lives on the network too. So for example, if you write something and then have second thoughts about, maybe I shouldn't have sent that, you don't have any control. You might delete it, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't been copied to some other part of the internet by the, before you have a chance to do that. People can actually copy and paste or take screenshots or whatever, what they see, and they could use that later on to represent you or represent against you. There was a very interesting, I had a great um, friend, Peter Gregory, who's a cybersecurity expert, and in fact is a, is a chief um, technology um, cybersecurity officer right now for a major company and consults with a lot of other companies that have their security things. He had a graphic that he presented to his class and it had on it a farmer and then these pigs in a little paddock behind the farmer. And the pigs are, boy, our life is great. Isn't it great? We get three meals a day. We get this warm, dry place to stay. This is wonderful. What they don't know is that they're not the consumer, they are the product. And that is the way we are in many of these free social media things. We don't realize that they're motivated not out of the kindness of their hearts to let everybody share, but they're actually taking your information and marketing it from what they've learned. With this in mind, you know, they're not necessarily malicious or anything like that in that way, but you have to kind of be careful because information that you share, if you don't read the fine print, it may go to places you don't expect. And a lot of that's happened in, in places before through like Facebook plugins and things like that. So be careful about what you post on social media. You can't take it back, even if you delete it. Another thing is that you want to make sure that you use the privacy and security controls that are there. On a lot of services now, you do get some privacy and security controls set for you, but a lot of them are opt-in. In other words, you have to go to that section. You have to find it in that particular service and set those security controls. So for example, that what you post is only visible to your friends or visible to your friends and their friends or visible to the whole world. Yes, you have to be careful a little bit how these are set and you might want to explore that and find out how effective those controls are before you start posting anything that you consider to be private. 
So the other thing is that remember that even if you post something just your friends, that doesn't mean your friends can't take, they think it's really cool, they might go and share that with somebody else. Social networks are great for sharing. So it may easily get beyond the, the scope that you are trying to limit it to, even if you're setting those controls so that you're not posting directly to people outside of your group. Another point here is that you should keep your personal information personal. And the reason is, is that anything that you give, you know, like personal anecdotes and things like that, well, maybe you use some of those stories, for example, to create your past phrases or something like that. Anytime you let information out that gives people more information about you, these days, those bots and things that we were talking about earlier, they can collate this information and coalesce it together until they kind of have this broad picture of you. And now all of a sudden, these things that you thought were just known to you can be known to other things as well because they can put the pieces of this puzzle together to get a more complete understanding of who you are and what experiences you draw upon. So it's always a good idea to keep your personal information personal. Another thing as Toastmasters that we should be aware of is to communicate carefully. It's easy to kind of respond to another post out there and just say something off the top of your head without really thinking of the ramifications where they're there. But those things can impact your reputation on there. And oftentimes when we want to say something, we say it because we want to help somebody or we'd like to persuade somebody, maybe teach somebody how to do something. But if we kind of go off the handle without really thinking about it, we can end up discrediting ourselves. And therefore, we have very little impact in the world to, to make those great world changes that we got on social media to help make, right? So make sure that you communicate very carefully and clearly. Choose your words carefully. And then also understand that what you say could be misinterpreted. Think about how people, you know, kind of read it back before you click that post button. How are people going to hear this? How are they going to read this when you see it at that particular time? And that leads me to something I call the golden rule of social media. Post about others as you would have them post about you. I think that's a great rule. Don't say something to someone else that you would not want them to say back to you. I think that's a great test, a great litmus test to find out if it's something worth posting that I'll actually repeat that again is such a great idea. Another thing is that we need to make sure that we understand the agreements that we're working under. I, at the beginning, I kind of talked a bit about our um, agreements and what they mean, but really, no, they vary quite a bit between services. So we should not confuse what belongs to YouTube and what uh, the policies of Facebook are, even though they both allow posting videos. The rights of those particular things, and for example, things like checking for copyrights and things like that are different between those and how they respond to those types of events are different as well. So it's good to understand what it is before you use those services. And uh, this kind of applies to any service. I already talked about the golden rule of posting, but never download without consideration. And I mean by consideration, consider the source of your download. Is it somebody that you trust? Is that file that's being shared with you coming from a trustworthy source? Is that in a format that could be malicious? These are all good questions to ask. A plain text file might be all right, but an HTML file could have embedded code in it. Or perhaps there might be macros in a, in a Word file or in a, an Excel spreadsheet. Be careful what you accept and people are sharing something with you. Know the source. And then finally, uh, my ninth point, don't share passwords. This is going to sound re redundant, isn't it? Don't share passwords between your services while you're out there. Because remember that social media is there to help connect people. And in many cases, security is a little bit of an afterthought. It's not something they oftentimes put first and foremost into their services. And there have been some rather stellar cases and examples of some hacks that have occurred on social media sites. So think a little bit about that. If I were to put my password out here and then suddenly somebody discovered that through some intrusion in a social media site, what would I do? Would I have to go to all these other sites to change my password because now they know it? And if they know my username and my password, 
well, they could get into that then, couldn't they? And there's a lot of spoofs and things like that done on Facebook these days. Another thing about passwords, if you think you've been compromised, change that password right away. Don't wait uh, to see what happens. You should change it right away. And finally, if multi-factor authentication is available, or what uh, I believe we've referred to in the previous as two-factor authentication, take advantage of it. It's a good thing to do. And one final thought on these services is that if they're offering to broker you like a single sign-on solution, you might think again about that because again, security is not necessarily their front line or their forte. So you wanna make sure that you're working with good services that have rep good reputations in the security realm. So there you have it, nine rules for engaging social media. Here's a link that gives you some information that sort of summarizes these if you'd like to look through that. And I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Mr. Panel Moderator. Game over.